Well, Donald, I do hope you'll reconsider to meet me on the debate stage. Because as the saying goes, if you've got something to say, say it to my face. Fox News embarrasses Kamala Harris after she refuses to debate Trump. So in this video, we're going to break it all down. Welcome back to the Devore Darkens show. I am Devore Darkens. You guys already know what to do. Like, share, and subscribe to the channel so we can get this video out to more people just like you and me. Now, President Trump had already did a debate. He crushed the debate. He embarrassed President Biden in that debate to the point where they had to force this man to drop out of the race. Okay, that's what has happened. And as a result of President Biden dropping out of the race, they obviously installed Kamala Harris to take his place without her actually receiving votes in a primary process. But that's a whole nother thing. And now it's all about let's get these debates over with so people can see what she's all about and what Trump is all about. And by the way, before we get any further into this video, let's understand the mindset of the Democratic Party. They do not really want her to debate Trump. OK, they do not want her exposed like that just like they did not want President Biden exposed. But they thought it was such a great idea to roll him out there on that debate stage against Trump so early in the process. Now, some people believe they did it because they needed him to drop out of the race. That's what some people believe. However, what we do know is that President Trump had agreed to do two debates, the early one that was on CNN, and then the later one, which is scheduled for September 10th, on ABC, Trump decided to change the debate to Fox News on September 4th, and it's for an amazing reason, which we'll play in this video. Let's just take a look at the reaction from these propaganda news channels. Let's play that clip. Donald Trump is trying to get out of a debate with Vice President Harris. Now, he claims the ABC News debate set for September 10th was, quote, terminated. But the Harris campaign says that's just not true. A campaign source tells NBC News that it's their understanding that N ABC intends to, quote, provide the airtime to whichever qualifying candidates show up. Donald Trump instead proposed a debate with his friends at Fox News. Here's what he said last night in Atlanta. You know, we're doing one with Fox. If she shows up, I don't think she's going to show up. She can't talk. She can read a teleprompter. I'd give her about a six. On a scale of 10, six. For talking, I'd give her less than a one. We need people that can talk. Vice President Harris responded, quote, it's interesting how any time, any place becomes one specific time, one specific safe space. OK, so you guys seen that. And this is the first point I want to make in this video. Pay attention to the words that they're using. They keep saying uh, Trump is running away from a debate. Uh, Trump is scared to debate. Um, Trump is panicking about the debate with Kamala Harris. Guys, come on. Are, are we dumb or something? Like, you think she's going to do any better than Biden? Like, you think she's better than Biden back in 2020? You think she's better than Hillary back in 2016? I mean, have, have we seen her interviews? Have we seen how she answers questions? That's why I'm telling you guys. They're not trying to roll her out there like that. Now, she has no choice but to do a debate, but they hope she doesn't have to. They would love to pull a Katie Hobbs out in Arizona. They would love to repeat the same process. Katie Hobbs never debated Carrie Lake. She just ran her campaign and she was voted in. So some people believe that that's what the Democratic Party is trying to do is say, hey, you know what? We don't need to do any major press conferences. We don't need to do any interviews. We don't really need to do any town halls. And technically, we really don't need to do a debate. We could just run our campaign and get her elected. So this brings me to the statement that her campaign put out, right, about Donald Trump and him not wanting to do the ABC debate. Now, understand something. Uh, there's a current lawsuit between him and ABC, so that's probably why he's not going to want to do the debate. And he actually said that, and we'll get into that here shortly. But anyways, uh, this is their response to him saying, I want to do the debate September 4th on Fox News. Uh, and, you know, it, it's more that whole... Um, it's almost like high school, right? Uh, D Donald Trump needs to man up. He's got no problem spreading lies and hateful garbage at his rallies or interviews with right wing commentators. But he's apparently too scared to do it standing across the stage from the vice president of the United States. Since he talks the talk, he should walk the walk. And as Vice President Harris said earlier this week, say it to her face on September 10th. Uh, she'll be there waiting to see if he'll show up. OK, whatever. Um, 
Now, like I told you guys already, they probably are hoping that he doesn't show up because I'm telling you, it would actually look pretty bad if she had to truly debate uh, President Trump. I mean, it just isn't going to look good for her, um, especially if uh, the debate is just like CNN, where they're asking legitimate questions. Uh, I, I don't even think she even needs tough questions. If they just ask her questions, she's going to sound stupid. And so this brings us to the response that President Trump had. So he says, Kamala Harris doesn't have the mental capacity to do a real debate against me. I agree. Scheduled for September 4th in Pennsylvania. Um, she's afraid to do it because there's no way she could justify her corrupt and open borders, right? The environmental destruction of our country, true. The Afghanistan embarrassment, absolutely true. Runaway inflation, true. Terrible economy, true. High interest rates and taxes, true. And <laughs> her year, years-long fight to stop the words Merry Christmas. I'll see her on S September 4th, or I won't see her at all. And uh, he goes on and on and on. Now, um, he does say this, that the combination of these two low iq individuals have destroyed our country, but we will make America great again. Now, obviously, they make a good point because what they have behind them is this propaganda machine like MSNBC or like CNN or like ABC. All they do is sing high praises to Kamala Harris and hating on President Trump. But the good thing about some of the news channels out there is they're a little bit more honest, which brings me to what Fox News had to say about Kamala Harris when it comes to debating. Let's take a look at that. Kamala Harris, this is really, she doesn't have a whole lot of experience facing Republicans in elections, right? This is essentially a one-party state here in California. Democrats have had a super majority here for God knows how long at this point. Every time she's run, whether it's San Francisco DA, California AG, California Senator, it's always been about Democrats, against Democrats. How is it going to be different for her this time running against an actual Republican, the biggest Republican right now in Donald Trump? Well, we're going to see that she has a glass jaw. Look, she's been promoted just by Peter Principle every step of the way. She hasn't faced any real opposition from Democrats either, by the way. And so when she has to actually answer questions from people who have real concerns, I don't think her vibes are going to play Even that anymore. well. Yeah, and Roxanne, as Alex just mentioned, she hasn't really done any media interviews yet. We don't know exactly where she stands now. A lot of her positions seem to be changing from what they were back in 2020, whether it's fracking or decriminalizing illegal immigration. She even compared ICE to the KKK. Uh, she's tossed around the idea of abolishing ICE, giving health care to illegal aliens. Take a listen. I think there's no question that we've got to critically re-examine ICE and its role. I am opposed to any policy that would deny in our country any human being from access to public safety, public education, or public health. Now she's doing a little bit of a 180 on some of these prior policies. Still hasn't talked to the media yet, hasn't taken a question. Where do you see this going for her? Um, it's not going to end well. Look, I'm from Jamaica, so I can say this. She is not um, the best person. At, she will, I will, or yes, I, I will, uh, the people are coming. It's, none of what she says really makes sense. And that's because no one's ever had to pin her down. She's willing to take both sides of an issue because she's never actually, as you said, had to run anything or do anything. And I think people looking at her to be the chief executive of, uh, of the country, are going to think again before they put her in that position. She always talks like someone who got assigned a book for a book report and they didn't read it. Okay, so you guys saw that and they make a phenomenal point, right? She's yet to even sit down with even the propaganda news channels and answer simple questions. I mean, it's it's fascinating that the only time we're able to even hear a response is either she's at a rally, but it's part of her speech, or secondly, they're catching her midway to Air Force One right before she's going to get on the plane and they're able to squeak in a, a question or two, right? Like that's the only time we're able to get anything out of her mouth. Every other announcement has been released by her, her campaign staffers. And I really believe this is disrespectful to Americans. I really, do, I really do believe it is. I think it's a form of gaslighting or it's the sister of gaslighting where it's an intentional silence to manipulate people into voting for you. Right. Because they're letting the propaganda machine trigger people and get them to become scared of President Trump. And at the same time, they're not saying anything that can call people to question Kamala Harris. But I really don't think that's going to work. I think it's actually going to backfire, because if you can't tell people, hey, here's where we are, which is point A and here's point B. And here's my plan to get us from point A to point B. If she's not going out there and saying anything like that. I think it will backfire when it's all said and done. And like I've been saying, 
I don't believe it's in her best interest to do a debate. Um, there are a couple of reasons why they are not going to agree to the debate with President Trump on September 4th. Reason number one is it's before people can cast their vote. These are people who are allowed to do early voting. There's quite a few states out there that allow early voting <laughs> in the month of September. Yes. Um, and so if you go back to 2020, when Trump and Biden did their debates, it was after early voting has taken place. So there was already people who casted their vote before hearing both of them on stage. Um, and so Trump wants to get ahead of that, of course. Now, reason number two is that she can't actually debate people. And you know what? That isn't my opinion. This is a fact. Unless she's had some transformation over the last few years, which I believe she has not, we can always go to the receipts to see that she cannot handle a debate because we saw what happened to her in 2020. Let's take a look at that. I want to bring the conversation back to the broken criminal justice system that is disproportionately negatively impacting black and brown people all across this country today. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. Thank you, Congresswoman. Uh, Senator Harris, your response. As the elected attorney general of California, I did the work of significantly reforming the criminal justice system of a state of 40 million people, which became a national model for the work that needs to be done. And I am proud of that work. And I am proud of making a decision to not just give fancy speeches or be in a legislative body and give speeches on the floor, but actually doing the work of being in the position to use the power that I had to reform a system that is badly in need of reform. That is why we created initiatives that were about re-entering former offenders and getting them counseling. The bottom line is, Senator Harris, when you were in a position to make a difference and an impact in these people's lives, you did not. And worse yet, in the case of those who were on death row, innocent people, you actually blocked evidence from being revealed that would have freed them until you were forced to do so. There is no excuse for that. And the people who suffered under your reign as prosecutor, oh, you owe them an apology. Okay, so you guys seen that. And, you know, if this is what President Trump is going to do, if they did end up in a debate and he just asked the perfect question, which was which would be, what have you done for the American people over the last four years? What did you truly do for California? When I go poll California citizens, are they going to say we were happy that Kamala Harris was our attorney general? We were happy that she was a prosecutor in San Francisco. We were happy about the policies that she endorsed, that she helped create, that she helped enforce. What are people really going to say? So if I was her campaign, hey, I, I wouldn't want her on that debate stage. Put her in a town hall, give her softball questions, right? And make sure that it appears that she's answering hard questions in front of an audience. Do that if I was them. But uh, I, I digress. So as I wrap up this video, I want to say this to you guys. Uh, you're seeing the full force of a propaganda machine at work, right? What they immediately do is say that Trump is scared to debate her, which is not true. Um, what they say is she's ready to debate anytime, anywhere. Not true. She hasn't even done any legitimate interviews. I mean, President Trump has been on Fox, Fox News. This guy even went to the National Association of Black Journalists. Where has she been? And so it's a full press on making her look like an angel. And um, I believe a lot of Americans are seeing right through it. I, I really believe they are. And my mission right now is to make sure that people see uh, through the bullshit and get the facts so that they can make an informed decision. So they feel like they were not gaslighted or tricked into voting for someone. Listen, if you're not going to vote for Trump, that's fine. Just make sure you've done your research on why that is. Pull up some facts, pull up some studies, pull up some numbers, right? Show some objective truths to why you don't want to vote for him. Just don't go based off how you feel. Don't go based off what the news told you to do, 
right? Use your own thinking. Use your own mind. God has given you one. You're supposed to use it, right? And so that's what I want for everybody in this election year. So that's all I got to say about this. What about you? What do you guys think about uh, this ridiculous going back and forth about the debate? Um, how they're saying Trump is scared to debate. Okay, whatever. Um, and that she doesn't want to do the, the debate on Fox News because, you know, they think that she's not going to be treated fairly. And obviously they're trying to protect her. So what do you think about all this? Answer that and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Stay grateful, stay focused, and stay true. Peace. Peace.